everybody, it's me, Katie. If you don't recognize me tonight, it's only because I'm wearing my glasses. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel where it's all Revolutionary War all the time, except for tonight. Now, if you've watched this channel before, then you already know this, but if it's your first time here, then welcome. I'm very happy to have you join us. My name is Katie Turnagetti, and I am a Revolutionary War researcher, writer, and speaker based in the Boston area. And this channel is intended as a fun and friendly place where I share my research. Also on this channel, we embark on historical action adventures. We visit burying grounds, historic houses, and battlefields, all in an effort to get out there and visit the actual places where the American Revolution occurred. I was just really inspired to film this video tonight in order to share something with you all that I just found fascinating. Last night, I got very wrapped up in looking at photographs online of the Battle of Iwo Jima. And the Battle of Iwo Jima took place in the Pacific from February 19th, 1945 to March 16th, 1945. And I spent hours just prowling the internet and looking at pictures of the battle. And for some reason, I was particularly interested last night in photos of the landing. There are many reasons, I think, for this. One is that my biological grandfather, whom I never met nor spoke to, was there. He served in the United States Marine Corps, and in February of 1945, he was serving in the 5th Marines Division, 27th Regiment. And he was an enlisted man, although he did earn a battlefield commission on Iwo Jima, and he would later become an officer. I trace his service when I can. And not only does that allow me to get to know him a little bit, but it also allows me to get to know World War II more. And I do this when I trace the service of um, my grandfather, and I had several great uncles who served in both the Pacific and in the European theater. And it allows me to just kind of learn about World War II and its battles through their experiences. And also, by the way, let me know in the comments if you have a family member who served in World War II, because I would love to hear about them. I think it's so important that we keep retelling these stories about our family's experiences. So I got very wrapped up in these photos. And that is, I think, when it really struck me. As someone who studies the American Revolution, which is my passion, it's been my lifelong passion beginning when I was three years old and my dad would bring me to battlefields and historic sites. There, there was no photography. There are no pictures. We never see the expressions on the soldiers' faces as they were about to enter into battle in the American Revolution. But last night, I was just gripped by the fascination of looking through these World War II photos and seeing these men's faces and their expressions and those moments frozen in time and how amazing it was to watch the battles unfold. And I was just looking at photos last night online. I didn't even dig around in any film footage. And there was one photo last night that was especially intriguing to me and that really drove home this difference between, 
you know, those two wars. And of course, it's not just World War II. There was photography at minimum at the Civil War and all the way upwards. But there's a photo of what I think is the 5th Marine Division coming on shore at Iwo Jima. There's a war photographer embedded with the troops. And to the photographer's right, there's a Marine. And he's pretty close to the camera and he's, and he's looking. And it's a kind of close-up photo. It's a little blurry, but you see the expression on his face. I was really struck by that moment on February 19th, 1945, that landing. There was an image of it just frozen in time. And this Marine was kind of looking at the camera with, with an expression on his face that I think I don't have adequate words really to describe because how can I even approach you know, his experience or, or know how he felt in that moment. And I thought to myself, this is amazing because the battle hadn't even happened yet. And none of the Marines that were photographed on that beach knew what fate awaited them. They didn't know what was going to happen to them. The battle hadn't even happened yet. And of course, it gives you a strange kind of a time warp sensation because we're looking at it as it's unfolding. It hasn't even happened yet, but it was 80 years ago, almost. We're approaching the 80th anniversary of Iwo Jima, and so it is receding into the past. And yet we have this uh, photographic documentation of these Marines being kind of positioned just on the precipice of the beginning of what would be, what would become such an iconic battle in Marine Corps history, World War II history. So it was very moving to me and I couldn't help but think, what if we had similar photos of Revolutionary War soldiers? What if a photo of a provincial soldier positioned in the redoubt on top of Breed's Hill on June 17th, 1775 could have been taken to see his expression as, you know, maybe he watched the British troops forming at the bottom of Breed's Hill after just having been ferried across the Charles River to land at Charlestown. What would he have looked like? What would his expression have been? There's no answer. It's just kind of exploring, I think, the very human element of, of war, of battles. And so I was just kind of so inspired by all of the photographs and thinking so deeply about it that today, my dad and I, and my dad is my partner in crime in my historical action adventures, we made a trip out to the American Heritage Museum in Hudson, Massachusetts. And if you've never been there, it is well worth the trip. It features one of the world's largest collections of tanks and military vehicles. And the scale of the museum is astonishing. It is very, very powerful. So I got to check that out, which was really fascinating and particularly moving, especially after seeing so many of the photographs that from Iwo Jima that I looked at last night. So if you'd like a little bit more on World War II, I did a video on World War II combat art, artwork that was actually made by American troops. And let me know in the comments below if anyone in your family served in World War II. I would love to hear about them. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.